We are still here. Native American truths everyone should know. Written by Tracy Sorrell, illustrated by Fran Lisak. Our native nations have always been here. We are indigenous to the continent now called North America. Our leaders are sovereign and have power to make rules. Our ways of life changed when white people arrived from Europe. In 1776, white people broke free from England and created their own country called the United States of America, which affected our lives even more. Like European rulers before them, the leaders of the new U.S. government signed legal agreements called treaties with our native nations. These treaties recognize sovereignty of our native nations to exercise control and power over our people and lands. But some treaties force native people to leave our homes or sell the lands where our ancestors lived. The U.S. government made promises to native nations in almost 400 treaties altogether. But the federal government did not always keep its promises to the tribes. Most of the time, their laws and policies have been devastating. Most people do not know what happened to native nations and our citizens after treaty making stopped in 1871. Despite the continued occupation of our homelands, regular attacks on our sovereignty, and being mostly forgotten in US culture, native nations all say, we are still here. Winona's presentation, Assimilation. Most U.S. leaders did not respect our ways and thought it would be better for us to adopt their beliefs and practices. From the country's earliest days, white men sought to weaken our native nation's power to govern, destroy native families by taking our children away and sending many to boarding schools, outlaw our sacred practices, punish us for speaking our own languages, even under these harsh laws, Native nations say, we are still here. Key's presentation, allotment. White people want to control and sell even more of our tribal lands. Native nations had already given up larger pieces of land for smaller ones and treaties. In fact, the United States passed laws that divided up the remaining allotted lands of many tribes, gave a certain amount of land to each tribal citizen, sold the leftover land to white settlers and railroad companies. In spite of all this, Native nations say, we are still here. Tazba's presentation, Indian New Deal. The US government tried to help many people during the Great Depression, but its leaders saw how badly Native people suffered compared to others. Knowing that, Congress crafted a series of new laws that protected tribal culture, arts and crafts, allowed native languages and traditions to be taught in schools, set aside money to buy back lost tribal lands, changed most tribes' governing systems to operate more like the U.S. government, which was not always helpful. Noting these new laws, native nations say, we are still here. Chase's presentation, Termination. In order to save money, the U.S. government decided to stop ordering treaty agreements with more than 100 native nations. This terminated our relationship with the federal government and no longer allowed our tribes or citizens to be legally separate in the United States. Although our tribes kept their part of each treaty, the United States stopped working with the tribal leaders, sold the effective native nations lands and resources, lowered the government's financial duty to tribes nationwide. With the return of these anti-sovereignty policies, our native nations say, we are still here. Caddy's presentation, relocation. The federal government wanted us to leave our tribal lands and live and act more like white people. So Congress passed a law that pushed aside the fact that indigenous people are separate under the law with rights as citizens of our native nations and of the United States, encouraged us to move to cities far from our tribal homes, promised jobs and schooling to those who moved, led the populations of poor native people with little support in cities and suburbs. Even with our people scattered throughout the country, native nations say we are still here. Jesse's presentation, 
tribal activism. Native citizens continue to speak up, organize, and increase our long-standing commitment to strengthen tribal sovereignty, speak out about termination and relocation, recover our lands and harvest traditional foods, draw attention to Native people's lack of sufficient health care, help students go to college, including on tribal lands. With our collective voice and presence, Native nations say we are still here. Will's presentation, self-determination. Native nations needed more control of our own lives, so we pushed back on federal rules that oversaw nearly every part of our life on our lands. To support tribal sovereignty, the United States passed laws that recognized that our governments could handle our own affairs, help Native nations offer programs and services directly to our citizens, restored many terminated tribes to federally recognized status, allowed some tribes to recover lands lost during allotment and termination. While pressuring Congress to carry out these laws, our Native nations repeatedly say, we are still here. DJ's presentation, Indian Child Welfare and Education. Native nations care about the welfare and education of our children. We needed to stop officials in various states from removing thousands of our children from their families and placing them in non-native homes. Native nations prompted Congress to approve laws that block state officials from taking our children without notifying our tribe, focused on native children staying with family or other tribal citizens, address the specific education needs of native children in our communities. To protect and provide for our future generations, native nations say, we are still here. Maya's presentation, Religious Freedom. Native people challenge federal and local laws and policies that have banned us from freely practicing our traditional religions. Native nations sought help from the U.S. Supreme Court so that we could practice our beliefs and ceremonies, tribes could access sacred sites outside our lands, tribal citizens could keep and use sacred objects. When the court did not support us, Native nations sought support from Congress to say, we are still here. Ellis presentation, economic development. Tribal leaders noticed our people failing financially while others in the United States succeeded. Some Native nations opened casinos as a way to make money on our lands where few opportunities existed. This type of business allows those tribes to vary how people earn a living and care for themselves, use profits to develop businesses and employment, pay for important services like police, fire stations, and health care, offer scholarships and after-school programs as well as operate tribally run schools. Even though the federal government regulates tribal casinos, Native nations say we are still here. Chugi's presentation, Language Revival. Native nations want to increase the number of tribal language speakers. This is necessary to pass on values, stories, and ceremonies to future generations. Seeking to preserve our cultures, Native nations urge Congress to approve laws to encourage teaching Native languages in schools, allow our Native speakers to teach in classrooms, give financial grants to tribes and schools for language programs. Speaking indigenous languages strengthens our heritage, so each native nation says, in our own language, we are still here. Chance's presentation, Sovereign Resurgence. Having survived disease, war, and federal rules meant to destroy us and our way of life, native nations continue to exercise our sovereignty. Together, we take action to... Speak up for the land, water, and resources everyone needs to live. Look after our citizens' health, education, and safety. Share information with the United Nations about our treatment in the United States. Work together to shape federal and state policies that affect our citizens. All the while we say, we are still here. <laughs>